Salt and Sundry is one of my favorite local shops in all of this entire area. And Amanda McClemens is the owner. And I can't believe it's been 10 years. 10 years. Since you opened Salt and Sundry here at Union Market. An entire decade. It's amazing. <laughs> you were one of the first to locate here at Union Market when this whole area is being built up. Tell me about that experience. Absolutely. It was it was wild. I had no idea what I was doing. This was my first foray into entrepreneurship. So I was down here at the end of the market. Gina from Buffalo and Bergen was across from me. Carolyn from Righteous Cheese. So it was, it was a, a nice collection of women business owners who were doing this for the first time. So it was incredible. It was a very supportive experience because of that, but really scary at the same time. So I I'm just really grateful we're still here 10 years later. And you have two salt and sundries now, one on 14th Street. Yes. How would you best describe how you curate your store and what you offer? So we are extremely thoughtful about the products that we carry. Um, we support over 200 independent makers, artists, designers. So when you come to Salt and Sundry, you're finding things that you can't find anywhere else. Um, you know, we're, we're really looking to inspire and, and kind of you know, create a space that is, you know, it smells good, it looks good, you can come in and touch the, you know, find the textures. And we were missing all of that during the pandemic. Oh yeah. Um, when everything moved online. So we're just really grateful that we're we're back in the, the brick and mortar game. It's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. What about the next 10? <laughs> can you see, is it too much to ask? Does, predict the future in that way? It's, you know, I, I take nothing for granted. So, you know, I'm, I'm just like reveling in the fact that we made it this far. Our team has been so critical in that survival, the support of the community. And, you know, I hope to continue helping inspire people and kind of nurturing people's personal spaces for another 10 years or more, we'll see. <laughs> and speaking of that, I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons why you wanted to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, because you had the knack, you had an eye for creating beautiful space and homes. And as I'm looking at this table, mm -hmm. I think I could never put this together for any occasion, but this is what you do. Yes. It's not something that requires research. You have an eye for this. Can you talk about this table and where you start mm -hmm. and build mm -hmm. a beautiful table, whether you're hosting for a holiday, mm -hmm. just a small dinner party, mm -hmm. or maybe you want to have a special night at home? When I'm thinking about creating a table setting, it's really about inspiring people with a beautiful visual table, but also mm. comfort. So you want people to feel like they can sit and move around and pass plates. So one of my rules is to keep everything really low. So you don't wow. want to create like gigantic uh, flower arrangements. We have this little kind of an accent flower arrangement, mm -hmm. if you will, that you could have in the center of your table, but then move it when people sit down. And I've seen that happen where people move the flower or yes. the centerpiece away because they can't talk yes, to the person across you're like, the table. You're like trying, you know, you're looking over like right. a palm leaf like, or something. Mm -hmm. um, and my one exception to that rule are taper candles because mm -hmm. they create this extremely flattering, glowy light, like right at your eye oh. level, which is, you know, that makes people feel like they're glowing and the person across from them are glowing. So why haven't know. I thought about <laughs> this and taper candles, that yes. it's not just visually yes. pleasing, yes. it makes the people sitting around the table look nice too. Yes, and, right, if, you're, Amanda, and if you're not into cool. it, you could always put, you know, small tea lights. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do like small little floral arrangements and bud vases like this. Again, mm -hmm. you're making it so that people can still grab what they need, have access to their glasses, and there's not a bunch of stuff in the middle of the table. After that, what about place settings, glasses? Yes, so you're kind of thinking about pick a color or a couple colors that you're into. It doesn't have to be, you know, if it's the holidays, think of something outside of the box. Think mm -hmm. of colors that are speaking to you or colors that you already have in your home. You could even take a blanket, you know, a thin blanket or something and use it as a tablecloth. Mm -hmm. um, we've layered a couple different textiles to kind of give some layers of texture. Oh. You're, we're mixing patterns. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not matchy-matchy, but it goes together. Yes, I think yes. that's the hard part for me is to figure out, is it gonna go together? Yes, <laughs> and you know, you could pick a really neutral palette, like all whites or white and black mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of creamy colors, but don't be afraid to play with, with pattern mixing. Mm -hmm. This is great. And then what about everything else in terms of plates mm -hmm. and glassware? 
So um, I like to think about like a little sort of surprise when people sit down. It could actually be something that you're going to send your guests home with. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe if you're really motivated, you've created a, a, a homemade treat they can take. If not, we've just taken a little piece of the uh, flowers that we were using for our flower arrangements oh, yeah. and just so popped pretty. it on top. They can stick it out of the way when they sit down, but it kind of just adds another layer of, of texture and surprise. It's really pretty. Yeah. And do the plates, they don't necessarily go together either right it's not exactly. a matching set exactly again don't be afraid to mix don't be afraid to use what you have and do not create a bunch of unnecessary waste like no plastic cups no paper napkins like yes you're gonna create dishes if you're using all of the things in your pantry but you know from an eco-friendly standpoint like use the use the cloth napkins mm -hmm. and you can wash them you can wash them again and again and again I love this glass in particular. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Can you, what do you, I mean, I know you drink champagne in here. Can you drink yes. other things in here? You can, you can drink, you can drink other things in it, but it's definitely great for cocktails, great for, for that sparkling wine toast that you're going to be celebrating with at the end of the night. They also make really great um, ice cream cups oh, right. where you could do like a little uh -huh. parfait or some kind of dessert in them as well. Also very functional. Yes, it's exactly. It's a coupe, right? It's a coupe. It's a coupe. Like exactly. Champagne. I like the idea that you said you could put a dessert in it because that way you don't yes. feel so bad about buying a glass yes. just for champagne drinking. A little chocolate pudding cocktail. with some little oh, sprinkles on top. Yeah, you can do all kinds of things. Yeah. And I see you have salt at the table. Yes. Thank you for asking. Yes. <laughs> so well, it's called salt and sun. Exactly. <laughs> um, so the traditional salt shakers are really designed to dispense fine, highly processed salt. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's oftentimes hard to control you know, the seasoning. So I much prefer to put out small bowls like this. You could put a, a tiny bowl at each place setting, or you can just oh, put a couple for people yeah. to pass around and share. But use you know, a nice um, flake salt. You have a bit more control when mm -hmm. you touch it. If you don't want people to use their fingers, you can stick a little spoon, little spoon in it. Yep. Um, but it, it's, it looks nice. It, it, again, we're talking about adding texture, and it's just a much better salt to season your food with. Same with the pepper. Again, that pepper in the pepper shaker. Yeah. Who knows how long ago it was ground. I agree. It probably doesn't have a lot of flavor. So I just like to put a pepper mill on the table mm -hmm. if you're going to have that fresh, really aromatic pepper because you're grinding it fresh. And it adds to the table setting. It's like part mm -hmm. of the design, Exactly, right? exactly. Especially if you have a beautiful, a beautiful pepper grinder, a beautiful little salt cellar, little salt dips as they call them sometimes. So any other overall, if you're not Someone, like, you have an eye for this. I don't have an eye for this. Mm -hmm. So I like the candle idea. Are there just some easy tips if you're hosting at home, how to make sure it, it's less stressful? <laughs> well, I, one thing, before you even get to the table, the welcome is so important. And whether this is your family members at the holidays or it's friends that are new to, your, you know, coming into your home, you really want to make people feel comfortable the second they walk in. That means tell them where to put their coat, their bag. You know, you, you always have like the moment when somebody comes in and they stick their coat in their bag like on your kitchen counter while yeah. you're cooking and it's because they, they don't know where to put right. their things. So they're awkwardly walking around with things. So take the coat, take the bag, let them know where to put it. Get a drink in people's hands mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Water, mocktail, wine, mm -hmm. whatever they might like so that they're not sitting there thinking, what do I do now? Do I ask? And the same thing with a little snack. So you could create an elaborate appetizer spread or just stick out a bowl of nuts, olives, something so that if people arrive like starving, they're not sitting there thinking, when are they gonna feed me? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, so always, always, have always have a little nibble. Again, it does not need to be something you know, fancy. Just even a bowl of nuts will tide people over until it's time to actually sit down. Was this something you knew you wanted to do or had an eye for? Where did you learn or is it something natural to put a beautiful place setting <laughs> together or have a, a wonderful party at your home, that sort of thing? You know, I grew up my, in a house, my mom and dad are both great cooks and loved entertaining, but it was never fancy, it was never formal, you know, oftentimes it was flea market finds, you know, a cool thing that my mom had found, you know, at a, at a garage sale. So again, it, you don't have to spend a lot of money to, to find objects that are going to be meaningful to you. Um, but it was really something that I grew up with. And I, I, I think there's, there's no better way to get to know someone than to welcome them into your home and feed them.
I agree. That's <laughs> such a great way to spend time. Yeah. Amanda McClemens, thank you so much for sharing thank you. all your wonderful ideas. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you.